Welcome to another episode of Game Time. I'm here with the Highland High School football team and head coach Philip Lovato. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good win the other night against Del Norte, 19-13. You guys are stringing together quite a few wins. What did you like about that game and that victory against Del Norte? Um, every win. You know, <laughs> it's every win. I, I enjoy every win. But it was just good to see um, the dominance of our run game. We really ran the ball really well. The line blocked incredibly well. Um, you know, our... our our little brothers, the running backs, uh, you know, they ran as if they were six foot two. So uh, it was nice to just see kind of a good run package. You dominated the time of possession, particularly in the first quarter and the first half. Is that the game plan from here on out to really kind of grind it out on the ground against most of your opponents? It is, you know, we, uh, we work really hard on our conditioning, uh, especially it's all year with all the stuff that we've done with our yard work and stuff. Well, our kids, you know, they're not tired. They don't get tired, so. They didn't look tired the other night. <laughs> We're gonna talk more about your team and your program, but Highland wasn't the only team victorious this past week. Let's take a look at some of the other standout performances. One of the marquee matchups last week was Cleveland at Artesia, and this was a shootout as expected. The Storm trailed by six at halftime, but Cleveland put up 20 straight points in the second half. Dorian Lewis had three touchdowns in the final quarter. Cleveland picked up a 47-33 victory at Artesia. Rio Rancho picked up their third straight win, beating La Cueva in a close contest 24-21. The difference in this one was a 47-yard field goal by Zach Benedict. Piedra Vista traveled south to face Boleyn this past week, and the Panthers put up a big number against the Eagles. Piedra Vista racked up 375 yards of offense. Trent Corrali finished with 154 yards rushing and four touchdowns. 49-7 was the final. Piedra Vista improves to 4-1 on the year. The Los Lunas Tigers finally got to play a home game. After starting the season with four straight matchups on the road, the Tigers hosted Cibola for homecoming and never trailed in this one. Devin Gallegos with a second quarter score. Derek Chavez would make it 21 to nothing by getting into the end zone after a Cibola turnover. Los Lunas with a 42-12 win over Cibola. Centennial remained unbeaten after blanking Oñate 51 to nothing. The Hawks are averaging 49 points a game and have only given up a total of 14 points in the last four weeks. Las Cruces picked up a district win with a 63-13 victory over Gadsden. Marcos Lopez had a big night with 264 yards passing and four touchdowns. The Bulldogs snapped a two-game losing streak, and they're at Hobbs this Friday. Bernalillo held Santa Fe to just 54 yards of offense, and the Spartans picked up their fourth win of the season, beating the Demons 20-6. Capitals Gio Munoz and Luke Padilla combined for over 450 yards rushing and six touchdowns in their 41-0 win over Moriarty. Also noteworthy in this one, Padilla became Capitals' all-time leading rusher. Bloomfield remained perfect on the season after picking up another win. Don't sleep on Bloomfield. The Bobcats handled Hope Christian 32-7. Next up for Bloomfield is a road game at Valencia. It was a meeting of the Bradley brothers on Saturday as Carlsbad met up with Mayfield. Gary and Michael Bradley going head-to-head. -head. The Trojans improved to 3-1 on the season with a 27-14 win over Carlsbad. Aaron Thompson and Matt Riley each had two touchdowns. Yes, it is. Great enthusiasm, guys. We saw some of the standout performances. We talked about Highland picking up another win. You're 4-1 on the season so far, and at the start of the year, there might have been some question whether you'd have enough players to feel, feel the team, but now you guys really start having things headed in the right direction. What kind of change? What flipped the switch? You know, I keep saying that once it became public, that uh, the numbers were what they were, um, you know, I think that kind of really started it, and, you know, with media, with, um, you know, us being out in the community and just a lot of word of mouth, I think, kind of got our name out there. Um, you know, we, we do a lot of things with our kids to uh, really, you know, uh, put ourselves in a very positive position. And start of the school year, all of a sudden, I think 24, 25 kids uh, wanted to come out. Did, so, did it take a lot of convincing to get some of these guys out here? You know, it wasn't. I mean, it really happened. You know, we, we really worked hard all last year and, and trying to just get kids out. And then all of a sudden, uh, this big influx of freshmen came out and, uh, you know, where they came from, I don't know, but I'm glad they did. So. <laughs> well, you mentioned a little bit about your running game. You had 
some brothers the other night, the Lopez kids, who really, they're not going to blow anybody away with their size, but they sure are fast. How do you plan to utilize them? And are you concerned of them staying healthy because, you know, they are a couple of the smaller running backs out there? You know, they're the type of kids we're going to use them everywhere and anywhere. Um, you know, we have complete faith in what they do. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm not worried about them at all. Um, we do a really good job of how we try to take care of our bodies and making sure that everybody's healthy. You know, if, if people watched how we practice, they'd be surprised how, I mean, we probably hit less than anybody in the state. Um, Cause we have to really pay attention to our numbers. So health and, and all that is really important. Well, they sure are speedy and elusive. You know, I've yeah. covered Highland football for decades now, and I've seen guys like Bobby Newcomb and Jared Baxter come through here. Right. Looking back on the history of Highland, you have names like Tommy McDonald. Do you ever draw on some of that history or reflect on it or talk about it with these guys at all? You know, when I took over the program, that was kind of one of the, the factors. I mean, I'm an alumni from here. Uh, Bobby was actually a freshman when I was a senior. And, uh, you know, having alumni come and talk to the kids and having um, that history be embedded into what we're doing is, is something I've always tried to do. However, we also have kind of, uh, you know, tried to build our own new tradition, you know, still keeping the old, but also who we are now. Who you are now is a team that looks like they're on path to maybe make the playoffs. Is that something you talk about with these guys? That's our goal. You know, uh, every game is a step and we've talked about that. Last night's victory was great. We try to celebrate um, that moment and then we move forward. You know, we've done a lot of yard work right after we've won a game. So trying to get these guys to understand that the goal is to get to the playoffs and then anything can happen there. You have Valley up next on the schedule. How do you match up with the Vikings? You know, uh, Coach Chavez does a great job over there. You know, he always has those kids ready. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to do okay. I really do. If, if we do what we do um, best, um, we'll be fine. So, but I'm excited. I think, you know, it's going to be a fun game. It'll be fun to watch along the way. Thanks for joining us. You, we'll be back with more on Game Time after this. I thought I was pretty tough until I became a father. What do you mean you hate Real it? toughness is knowing when you need help. We've all been there. Fried nerves, no sleep. None of us do it alone. If you need help, you've got to ask for it. We need to fight for our kids' futures. It's up to all of us to make New Mexico the best place to be a kid. Connect with resources and support at pulltogether.org. <laughs> Are you living the life of an athlete? The New Mexico Activities Association brings you Life of an Athlete, a resource for students, educators, and parents to understand the challenges students face. Athletes, did you know one night of drinking will negatively affect your athletic performance for two weeks? Or that athletes who drink and do drugs are twice as likely to get injured? Alcohol's effects can reduce a high school athlete's potential by as much as 20 to 30%. Are you living the life of an athlete? Log on to lifeofanathlete.com to find out today. The New Mexico Activities Association is excited to announce the NMAA 24-7 mobile app. Whether you're a student, coach, parent, or player, you can have the power of the NMAA right in the palm of your hand. Find scores and schedules, follow your favorite teams, receive special offers from NMAA sponsors, get state championship information, highlights, features, and much more. Download the free NMAA 24-7 mobile app in the App Store or Google Play. Get it now. Welcome back to Game Time. We serve up a little bit of everything on the show. Different sports, boys and girls, big schools, small schools. They all want to try and get their hands on that state championship trophy. And one team down south has never done it. 
and this girls' soccer program would like to make school history. Hatch, New Mexico is known for its hot chili, and recently their girls' soccer program is starting to heat up. We've been improving every year. Every year just keeps getting better. Hatch Valley has never won a girls' state soccer championship. In fact, they've never even reached the title game. But now, they have one of the best records in the state. I'm feeling it, yes. I feel like it's the year. I hope so. This group is fairly young. They only have three seniors on the roster. They hope to build something for the players behind them. I think a lot of it is just passing down your knowledge to the younger people because after this year, it's their team. Like this is our last chapter, but they still have their whole story to build. I try to encourage them during the games, telling them to like keep on, keep it on, you know, so they won't get tired. They've qualified for state each of the past three years under head coach Arturo Bustillos. Girls say I yell a lot. I'm not sure. I'm a, I don't yell because I'm mad. I just get excited in the game. There you go. Give it to her. Now she's got to give it back. There. Take it. Take it along. Send it. Send it. Send it's it. Good yelling though. <laughs> he encourages. He encourages us during the games and everything. So what would it mean to finally win that blue trophy? It mean a lot. It's just making history. We, every year we try to keep improving one step at a time, making history, something new. It would be the best, honestly. We've been like trying to get there ever since my eighth grade year. I think that was our first time going to state, and we've just been trying to get there. These Hatch girls hope their game is as hot as their well-known hometown product when November rolls around. November will be here before you know it, but why speed up time, right? We still have lots of games to get to before then. Here are some of the key football matchups this week. Centennial has a test this week against Carlsbad. Goddard gets Los Lunas. Those two met in the postseason last year, so it should be a good one. Lovington will travel to Artesia. That will be a shootout between a pair of potent quarterbacks. St. Michael's and Santa Fe are just down the road from each other, and they square off on Friday and Saturday. Aztec makes the trip to Albuquerque. Before we say goodbye, I wanted to give a shout out to the Alamogordo football team. They recently dedicated their football season to Ariana Diaz. Ariana is a sixth grader at Mountain View Middle School and was diagnosed with stage four osteosarcoma and her cancer has spread to her lungs. She was diagnosed on July 12th of last year and had to have her right leg amputated. The Tigers are teaming up with kickit.org to help raise awareness and funds for children's cancer research. Through pledges and donations with the Kick It for Cancer program, they hope to raise at least $1,000 by the end of the season. Way to go. That's a good way to end the show. Thanks for watching this week. We will be back again on Tuesday at 6 p.m. with more highlights, more interviews and features. We have a real special one coming up at the end of the month, so make sure you keep watching. Until then, here's your meme of the week.